The third hypothesis test that we're learning about this week is the one sample proportion test. You are going to notice some similarities to the one sample Z test and the one sample T test. However, knowing how to do a proportion test is going to give us a new skill set that could expand the range of our research possibilities. Therefore, we need to find out how to do a one sample proportion test. The proportion test is a parametric procedure, which means we'll be using a population parameter. It tests whether a sample proportion is statistically significantly different than a population proportion. Following similar examples with polar bears, we have discovered in our research that some polar bears are taller than a penguin, others are not. In fact, in the population, 0.82 or 82% of polar bears are taller than a penguin. We draw a sample from this population and determine that 0.75 or 75% of our sample of polar bears are taller than a penguin. We want to know whether that sample is statistically significantly different than the population proportion or whether that difference exists solely due to chance. The research design for our one sample proportion test is going to mimic that from our one sample Z test or T test. We have a sample which has been drawn from a population. What is true of the population should be true of the sample which has been drawn from that population. But now instead of measuring a mean, we're measuring a proportion, essentially counts within the data. We know 82% applies to the population. Does our sample proportion match our population proportion? The independent variable is one sample, which is categorical data. The sample has been randomly selected from the population. The dependent variable would be counts presented in the form of a proportion. A proportion can be calculated by dividing the number of raw scores by the total number of scores. Every statistical test is built on certain assumptions. We need to make sure that our data meet the assumptions of the test that we want to use. The assumptions for a proportion test are slightly different than what we've seen with Z or T tests. We still have an assumption of independence, but with a proportion test, this means that the probability of the occurrence of each event is identical. We also have the assumption of normality. However, this assumption is met in a different way. If the sample size times the population proportion is greater than or equal to five, and the sample size times one minus the population proportion is greater than or equal to five. You have met the assumption of normality. And you can approximate using a normal distribution, just as we did with a z-test, which means that our cutoff score is going to be 1.96. If the assumption of normality has not been met, if these two values are less than five, then we can use a finite population correction when we do our proportion test. Here's what the statistical settings look like for our one sample proportion test. We will still be testing a null hypothesis that says that the sample proportion is equal to the population proportion. We would write our null hypothesis as H sub zero colon P equals P sub zero, where P sub zero is the population proportion. And as we have done with other similar tests, we will take the actual value from the population, let's say 0.86, and plug that in to our null hypothesis. We will plug in that same value for our alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis would be written as H sub one colon P does not equal P sub zero, where again we plug in the actual population proportion. We will stick with our alpha level of 0.05, and because we are approximating using a normal distribution, if the assumptions have been met, our critical value will be positive or negative 1.96, assuming the alpha level is 
if we were using an alpha level of 0 0.01, we would adjust that critical value proportionately. We will conduct our one sample proportion test using our business of the week, which this week is Ray's Diner. Ray, the owner of Ray's Diner, says that 80% of his customers order coffee. A waitress making her rounds surreptitiously records the number of customers who are drinking coffee. Of the 25 customers in her section, 17 are drinking coffee. She wants to calculate whether this sample is similar to the population proportion of Ray's overall customer base. The population proportion is 0 0.80, the sample proportion 0.72, which we calculate by dividing 17 by 25. Before we go on, let's check our assumptions and make sure that we can approximate using a normal distribution. The sample size is 25. The population proportion is 0.80. 25 times 0.8 is 20, which is greater than 5. 25 times 1 minus 0.8 is 5. The assumption is that both of these values are greater than or equal to 5, and in this case, they are. The assumptions have been met. We can approximate using a normal distribution. And now we can walk through the first three steps of hypothesis testing for our one sample proportion test. Step number one is to choose the appropriate test, which hopefully at this point you're getting pretty good at doing. Right now, we're studying proportions tests, so what test are you going to use for this data? We will use a one sample proportion test. Step number two, state the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is H sub zero colon P equals 0.80. The 0 0.80 is the population proportion. The alternative hypothesis is P does not equal 0 0.80. And when you see the equal and does not equal, you know that we are using a two-tailed test, and we previously stipulated that we would set our alpha level to 0 0.05. This time, we don't have to look up any values in a table because we're approximating with a normal distribution which means for a two-tailed test at alpha of 0.05, the critical value is and will always be positive or negative 1.96. And with that, we're ready to calculate the statistics. Proportions tests are pretty easy to do by hand, so I'll show you how we might conduct one using some math. We would first calculate the standard error of the proportion the formula for which you see here. We only need the population proportion and the sample size at this step. Plug in those values and we get a standard error of 0 0.08. That will go into our denominator. The numerator, or the test statistic, is the difference between the sample proportion and the population proportion. Subtract those two values and divide by 0.08 giving us a test statistic of negative 1.50. Remember, we were looking for z-scores greater than positive or negative 1.96. Our negative 1.5 does not exceed the critical value. Therefore, this test is non-significant. Returning to our five steps of hypothesis testing, Step number four is to calculate the statistic, which we have just done, and now we can make a decision. Because our z-score of negative 1.5 is less than the critical value, the probability of finding these results is greater than 0.05, and this test is non-significant. This waitress's customers order coffee in the same proportion as all other customers do. And here is how I would write up these results in proper APA style. A proportion test was used to determine whether customers in a diner order coffee in the same proportion as the population of diner customers. The proportion of customers, 0.68, did not differ statistically significantly from the population, which has a proportion of 0.80.
The z-test was a negative 1.5, probability greater than 0.05. This suggests that our waitresses' customers order coffee at the same rate as all diner customers. And now you know three ways to compare either means or proportions of a sample compared to its population. These are the first three of many hypotheses tests that we're going to learn in our basic and later in our applied business statistics course.